Matthew chapter 24 and verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. The central idea of this message is to show how Noah's family at the time of the antediluvians was able to come up victorious, was able to overcome and to be saved in spite of the prevailing wickedness. Being led by the Holy Spirit, they were instruments of righteousness. Being filled by the Holy Spirit of God, they were a family that contended with the antediluvians. And despite of the wickedness surrounding them, Noah family came up victorious. In the time of the end, in our days, we are, as Jesus says exactly, as in the days of Noah. Today, your family and my family must be filled with the Holy Spirit in order to emerge victorious. What was in the mind of Jesus with the phrase, as the days of Noah? Where is the key point? In Genesis chapter 6 and verses 1 and 2, we read, Now it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. So the issue of taking wives or taking women was a central issue. We have here the problem of fornication, the problem of immorality. How was the antediluvian's character how was the antediluvian mind? What did the antediluvians do? What concept did God have of them? In verse 5, we continue reading. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So here is the key point. In the days of Noah, the thoughts of those who live in that time period were evil continually. The Hebrew word for heart is 
Lebab and means the inner man, the inner being. It involves the mind, the will, the emotions, and the conscious. In other words, every single one of the antediluvians was completely damaged. They were far from God. They were separated completely from God. It is interesting how Noah and his family made the difference. We have to make the difference today. That is the challenge. You and me, our families, have to make the difference through Noah and his family. The Spirit of God contended with them. Through Noah and his family, the Spirit of God was showing what is distinct and different from what they were. We have the same challenge today. Verses 11 and 12. The earth was so corrupted. The earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. It is interesting that in these two verses, the word corrupt, corrupter, appears three times. This is telling us clearly that the antediluvian race was entirely in ruin. Their minds were completely damaged. Their minds were completely corrupted. The Lord Jesus says the second coming will be like the days of Noah. If we compare antediluvians with men today, we will notice that the work of Satan is focused on corrupting human minds. The task of the devil is to make his work in the minds of the people. He must corrupt their minds. Therefore, the work of the Holy Spirit must be in the minds of people, in their hearts. Violence and crime have rich unthinkable levels. Man was completely ruined, but there was a family of the Lord that was completely established by the Spirit of God. Wow, this is amazing. This is beautiful. A family, just one family of the Lord, completely established but the, by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. My brothers and sisters, my friends, there are no apologies. In the middle of the antediluvian era, 
a man named Enoch appeared, and he walked with God. And what did God do? God took him. If God work with Enoch and also work with Noah and if God save Noah's family, my brother, my sister, he can also save your family. In the middle of all this storm of wickedness, that reign in today's society. Amen? He can do it. In 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7, we find the message. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord looks at the heart. We need to understand that the Lord looks deeply in our, into our hearts. The Lord truly knows who we are. If in reality we are what we say we are, and we are consecrated to him, the power of God will be manifested in our life. In the book of Joshua, chapter 23, and verse 14, we find a very interesting expression that appears with the same word in Genesis 6 and verse 5. Soon I will die, going the way of everything on earth. Deep in your hearts, you know that every promise of the Lord your God has come true. Not a single one has failed. Not a single one has failed. Praise the name of the Lord. Understand in your mind, understand in your inner being, perceive in your mind and apply it to your will and knowledge in your conscience that the Lord has fulfilled what he promised, that the Lord does not lie, that the Lord always does what he promises. Amen. We have to trust always in him. The word lebab also means joy, discouragement, affliction, sadness, and happiness. The source of all emotions, the mind of the antediluvians was completely corrupted. Their feelings were completely corrupted. They were entirely damaged. What does God do in a mind that is 
corrupted. What does the Lord do? If we go to the book of Acts, chapter 16 and verse 14, we find that in this Bible verse, Luke is talking about Lydia. And what was Lydia doing? He was, she was listening the preaching of Paul. She was listening the message of Paul. And what happened? Look, almost at the end of this verse, the Lord opened her heart. The Lord opened the heart of Lydia and she accepted was what Paul was saying. The Lord opened her mind. The Lord opened her understanding. The Lord enabled her and filled her with the capacity to understand the message of Paul, her whole mind was lightened for the Lord so she can grasp the truth. Can the Lord change the mind of a person? Can he enable the mind of a person, the heart? Does the Holy Spirit have power to change someone? Of course, yes. The enemy is placing a lot of darkness in minds of many people. Look, what is going on with humanity today? And it's happened to the antediluvians. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, we read, we read, being darkness in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. The Lord knew that the antediluvians in that time, that like the antediluvians in that time, the people at this present time will have their minds, how? In darkness. In darkness. We are not talking here of non-believers only. We are also talking about certain Christians that say they are Christians, but they live their lives, say the opposite. Because of the hardness of their heart. They listen the calling of the Spirit. They listen to the messages of the Lord, yet they resist changing so they can keep on doing certain things that dishonor the Lord and impede others from knowing the wonderful message of salvation. Very sad. So the question is, how is our family's testimony? How is your relationship with our spouse? 
How is our relationship with our children? How is the Spirit of God in our homes? What is going on in our places, in our homes? When a man or woman is in intimate relationship with God, the influence in their lives reaches their spouse. The influence in their lives affects their children. And the influence of the family impacts their environment. Then it's evident that that family has power and can influence other families to consecrate their lives to God. It's beautiful, beautiful. When the Spirit of God takes possession of every mind and heart, we will notice how the light of his presence shines around us and we will see how we become fountains of living waters for those who desperately need Jesus. You remember last time we were talking about being messengers of mercy and now is your life, my life is completely filled with the spirit of God we will become fountains of living waters for the glory of Jesus at Christ. We need, we need to reestablish the family worship. This is very important. We need a more intimate communion with God every morning. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to work with us so that he may change us and transform us completely. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 and 4, we find this message. And I, brother, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of a speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Wow. Demonstration of the spirit and of power. One Christian family that is organized, a family that is in communion with heaven, one sincere family, a humble family, one family that is placed in the hands of God without pretensions, receives the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. And that, my brother and sister, inspires others' families. God wants to save every family. Praise the Lord. And verse 5 says that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but not again in the power of God. 
When you make room for the Holy Spirit, when you allow the Holy Spirit of God to work in your mind, in your heart, then amazing things start to happen. You can be completely sure about that. James chapter 3 and verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Not but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. It doesn't matter if the world, if this planet is crumbling to pieces. It doesn't matter how bad, how terrible bad the human race is. It doesn't matter how much immorality we have around us in this city, in this country. The same spirit that sustained Noah will sustain your family and your life as well. God has not failed. Amen? The antediluvians became a way, in a way, what Paul calls natural men. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. It is unbelievable how these people wanted nothing to do with God. And today, what is happening? Today is happening the same. Today, there are many people like that who wants nothing to do with God. Very sad. Today, like in the time of Noah, God wants spiritual families more than just religious families. We have too many religious families, but God needs spiritual families. What is the difference? Is how is your family? Religious or spiritual? What is the difference? Let's see. Spiritual families discern the things of the spirit. Spiritual families reflect the fruit of the spirit. Beautiful. Spiritual families reflect the character of our Lord Jesus. We are like him. We live our lives like Jesus lived. Spiritual families are more than willing to serve. Spiritual families live by the glory of God. Beautiful. Spiritual families have their treasure in heaven. Spiritual families have their minds in heaven and their feet on the ground. And spiritual 
families follow the instructions of God faithfully. Spiritual families are, I love this, are an extension of the kingdom of heaven. Spiritual families, they are sons and daughters of God. They are members of the family of our wonderful God. Spiritual families. When the Lord comes, he will gather every one of those families to take them to the heavenly kingdom. And we are waiting for that moment. We long for that a day. The Lord wants to work with your family and transform it into a spiritual family. We need to pray and work for that to be a reality. I think, I honestly think that the main sermon of Noah was not the words he spoke, but his personal testimony, the way he lived. The true sermon of Noah was each time he used the hammer in the ark, which announced to a lost world that he had an almighty God. Noah could not scientifically explain the matter of the flood. That word did not even exist, not even the word rain, but what Noah did. Noah believed the words of the Lord. He trust him completely. The Holy Spirit enabled Noah in a way that he believed in what he did not see. He understood what could not be understood and he preached what he did not know. Wow. And um, let's notice this. His wife believed because of his testimony. His children believed the testimony of their dad. Beautiful. The whole family was saved because of the testimony of one man, Noah. Would it be nice that by the grace of God, our lives may be filled with the Holy Spirit in such a way that we can reflect the character of Jesus. And then those around us, starting at home, our spouses, our children, can be inspired to be more faithful? Wow, what a beautiful a picture. May the Lord, the Lord is capable of changing and also transforming our lives. The Holy Spirit searches even the deep things of God and is capable of preparing our minds, our hearts, enabling it and training it to a better understanding of the wonderful things of God. 
May the Lord be our protector. May the Lord be the reason of our existence. May the Holy Spirit rest in us. Let this be our desire and also our prayer this morning, this Sabbath day. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to worship you today. Thank you for the angels who are with us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that convicts us of sin and of righteousness and also of judgment. Thank you for your Spirit that enables and allows our minds to understand your truth. Thank you, O Lord, thank you, because through the Holy Spirit, our brain, our mind, our inner being is enabled and made capable of grasping your word. In your holy hands, we place each family today, O oh God. May every person in this place be anointed with your Holy Spirit. Bless us and give us your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.